Today we're going to be working on how to create a duck bill for the 1955 era Healthways SCUBA uh, regulator. Now, the first regulator to be called SCUBA they, because basically it was easier than, than saying Aqualung and of course when you say Aqualung back then you're thinking uh, Jacques Cousteau and you're thinking U.S. divers and you're thinking Spiro, uh, La Spiro Technique. Okay, but what we're going to do is we're going to create one of these. Some of the tools you'll need first though, a good pair of shears, tough enough to cut through uh, some sheet rubber, a flat tip, fine tip screwdriver to get the, uh, the band off your, uh, your regulator. While you're at it, if you're doing all that, go ahead and get a new diaphragm. Most of them are crispy. These are available over at the uh, at thescubamuseum.com by a guy named Rob there under uh, 1969 Ivan at yahoo.com, I believe. Uh, he sells these and they work really good. Okay, so shear screwdriver, some uh, RTV black silicone instant gasket uh, seal uh, for uh, some stuff we're going to do for the, uh, for the uh, duck bill. There's, uh, I use a lighter silicone for something else for the secondary diaphragm inside the 1955, but we'll talk about that. You need, you need about five pounds of weight. I'm just using scuba weights. And a nice little folded piece of cardboard as a press will come into that. First, let's talk about some differences. This is the 1960 uh, Healthways. It's a first, uh, just a single stage, one stage regulator. Mechanically, they're identical to the 1960 and 1955. Main difference is they got smart, and of course they had to do a little bit more tooling with silver solder, but they put a duck, uh, basically an umbrella valve in as a duck bill. But uh, mechanically, they're identical to the 1960 and 1955. Now, of course, I put a Scuba Pro uh, yoke on this and on both of them because I use higher tank pressures than what they were originally designed for. You can use the original one, but just for safety, that now always, of course, retain your original parts like for trading or uh, if you want to get back to the original yoke. When we look at the 1955, we see something radically different. It has just a frontal plate, and on the inside, you have basically the same mechanism, same first stage, uh, and that's it, a single stage regulator, just like the uh, 1960. But you have this strange apparatus here. It, it call it a secondary diaphragm, for lack of a better term, and all it is is just a piece of rubber that's been fitted over a port for the uh, outflow uh, of the regulator, and it's got a wire strap with a little set screw and a bolt on it and it cinches down over that port. This one I've already got a duck bill in, I'm going to take it out and we'll show you what, uh, what goes on with that. Uh, as you can see it's a little bit different than most. Uh, it's uh, exhaust port is in the lower can in the, uh, the uh, what I call the uh, first stage can uh, and uh, it looks sort of neat. Now I've been told these breathe really hard and I didn't find that to be the case at all. What I did find was as long as you do your reg work and you tweak your, your actuating levers on the main diaphragm, they breathe just fine. So everybody says, oh, they're a hard breed and all that. Well, you, maybe you need a new set of lungs or maybe go run for about two or three miles every other day and get yourself in shape. Uh, the main thing is uh, on the new, uh, the new uh, main diaphragms like these, uh, Remember, they were set for the older diaphragms. These silicone ones can give you a little bit more play. You want those. You want those two levers right here. You want these two levers. You want these two levers right on, right next to it. As a matter of fact, maybe even a little bit higher than what you would do with an original. So when you push down, just put the uh, diaphragm on on the bottom can. When you put it down. You should feel that lever right there, okay? Preferably a little bit higher up because there's a lot more flex in these. What I found if you leave them at the original setting, 
you'll get what we call valve flutter, diaphragm flutter, and that's not cool. One other thing, oh, forgot. Most important thing for this rebuild is a one inch, approximately one inch wide bicycle inner tube. Okay, something like what you do on, on a European 10 speed, an older 10 speed, but approximately one inch wide inner tube. And that's flat in the container as it rolls out, it's going to be approximately one inch wide. And we're going to use that as our duck belt. So we're going to take about six inches of this, and I use six inches, an arbitrary number, but six inches is about right, just in case you have to play with it and trim it a little bit more. Uh, and we're going to turn it into this. And all this is going to come together really quick. It's too easy. Maybe it might take you 30 minutes once you get all the stuff together and slap it, slap the rig back together, and you'll find out it works really well. You might get a little bit when you're done. You might get a little bit of an opening on it. Once water pressure hits it, this seals up really nice. I've never had any water reverse on me, and this one is one I took out. I made another one. I'm going to make another one today. So, we've got our one inch bicycle inner tube, fresh from the package there. And we're gonna sit there, we're gonna cut about six inches of it. And of course it's gonna have a little bit of a natural curve, this curve to it, if you can see it sort of arcs a little bit uh, up. We're, we're basically where my finger's pointing, it'll arc up a little bit. And that's to go with the inside uh, diameter of the tire. That's not going to affect what we do because we're gonna be only using a little bit. Now I'm going to cut this one about four, well you can cut it six inches if you're new, new and want to tweak it. I'm going to cut this one about four to five inches and what we're going to do is we're going to find a zero line, a zero, 90 degrees being you know, on the horizontal and zero being vertical at the base of this and we're going to try to cut it straight across on that zero line. Okay, of course when we drop it. Now you're going to sit there, all you do is tweak it a little bit, stretch it a little bit, and take a look. If, if you've got a little bit of extra hanging out, fine, because that's going to be trimmed off. The main thing is you've got about this much to play with, and eventually you're going to turn it in to about this. Okay, I want to go ahead and, I've already uh, taken the uh, duck bill that I placed in there and wrapped it around the horn. We're going to pull that out. That's a new one. Don't let that little gap fool you. You can always press it some more and we can use some more of our other technique there. But once it goes in, it comes in at a slight angle and it closes down really well. And I'll show you how to test for that. One thing we gotta look at here is right here. You got that set screw and the wire, uh, wire wrap there. Don't take your set screw all completely out. It's just a pain in the butt. It'll go, you might lose a part. Just go ahead and loosen it all the way down, and you're going to roll your wire wrap off. And what you do is you just push it in and roll your wire wrap off one strand at a time, just like that. And you can follow it on around. See, it loosens right up. Go to your second wire wrap, and you can withdraw the, uh, the, the securing wire. Now what I've done on these older secondary uh, diaphragms, this one's in fairly good shape. Some of them are a little crispy. Uh, as far as the crispy ones, I haven't come up with a, uh, a replacement for it yet. It really looks a lot like a firewall plug. Uh, what I've done with this one, of course you can hit it up with, with all kinds of, uh, of uh, silicone gel and all that, but uh, generally that's not going to help it. It'll help a little bit from oxidation. What I've done is I'll take a, a light silicone, like a, like a very light window seal silicone, and place a little bit around the inner, inner edge there, being careful not to get any inside this area here. And you'll see this is taking a little bit of an engraving set there, because this actually does act as, a, as sort of a diaphragm for, uh, for the uh, regulator. Uh, to help stop off water flow back in. But you, you can see right there, you've got your hard area inside where your duck bill sits. And if you, I'm not sure if you can see it on the camera or not, you've got a little bit of engraving there. That wasn't there originally with the factory when it was new, but over the years it's taken a little bit of a set there. But that's okay. 
that shows it's sealed up good. And what I do, just to double double tap on that, as we say, is I put a little bit of a lighter, you know, lighter duty black silicone, just a little bit in and around the inner lip of the secondary diaphragm. Now, on later models in the late 50s, before they change over to the 1960 model, back in here, and try to get it down below, you actually had some more ports there that were cut into the metal. And I'm trying to look at there, yeah, you know, some more ports to see if we can get a better angle. This one, of course, doesn't have, but if you got one that's got little ports in there, you're going to have something that looks like a black rubber band that goes around there. And that's just another way of venting uh, exhaust once the duct bill is, is been actuated. It's a, a, a secondary exhaust port that they added to. Now, the reason why they did is to avoid legalities and patent problems with U.S. divers and uh, uh, air liquid and uh, aqua lung itself. So they came up with this uh, rather Rube Goldberg way of getting around that. And of course, in the 1961, and I believe in the gold label later on, they went with the, the umbrella uh, diaphragm, which is a hell of a lot better solution. This is a lot of work to get that uh, uh, silver solder in there just so you could avoid a, a patent uh, uh, penalty.